and is like whole. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm sorry to be a buzzkill. Take it back. But but no, but maybe this is an opportunity Way for you to... Way to bring down the vibe, bro. Man. <laughs> you just killed his dream. A sock dream. I'm sorry. <laughs> Because I miss, you know, having any time to interview you because you came on unfiltered when I wasn't on it. God, we'll get so I was that. like, I need Sarah Vasca in the room. We got to chat because honestly, we've known each other for a long time, but at the same time, I feel like we don't really even know each other because we haven't hung out like at all. Is it going? Yeah, yeah. it is oh. going. We're starting off hot. Okay. We usually just have a conversation and then it'll just naturally we'll start we'll figure out a way to start it. I love that. Yeah. I haven't done this in so long. Is hey. this a different setup than you <laughs> then... Oh yeah, you don't have a podcast anymore, right? Oh, RIP. She was cute, but like just some shit. We can get into that later. I always get kind of concerned though about like when, will there ever be a final episode of this podcast? On a very mm-hmm. special final episode of Hoot and a Half. Yeah. It, it's with me. I'm like, oh shit. Because <laughs> I, I never want, want there to. Let's not manifest that. No, not at I'm all. I'm saying in like in like 90 years, <laughs> not not <laughs> yet. Sarah, I love that you came festive. Of course, it's Christmas, baby. You brought the hat. You brought antlers. Yes. She's wearing for the people listening, which I made sure to frame up. Oh, so we can you. see the antlers. I had it a little bit lower, but now the, the antlers will be in frame. So. Uh, and I'm wearing a, a Christmas sweater, an ugly Christmas sweater that I bought um, off Depop. I knew, I just had a feeling that you were going to come festive. You did? <laughs> I did. I, I was, was either like... going to be super comfortable or festive. But I just got this, but I haven't really washed it. You know, like, have you ever, like, bought stuff, like, vintage stuff, and, like, you really should wash it, but you also need to kind of break it in? The key right. is inside out. You want to wash it inside out. That's how you keep all the stuff from going bad is you wash it inside out on cold on the gentle cycle. Clothes will stay fresh forever. I hate doing laundry. But Me I too. also kind of love smelling <laughs> the owners, like yeah. the previous <laughs> owners right when you get it. Because uh-huh. you can really feel out who it was. You get to like kind of get to know them a little bit. Like, cool. This guy was a smoker for sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> smoke <laughs> weed. A lot of McDonald's. It smells like <laughs> yeah. frying grease. Did your parents smoke cigarettes? Never. 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 Yeah. Ever. I was never. Well, my uncle did, so I was around it whenever my like uncle would come for Christmas and shit. Yeah. But my parents never were about it. Okay, so you weren't like, but you like had friends though who like whose parents did, and they always like smelled like smoke at school, and you're like, oh. I'm like, that? oh, Katie, what the fuck? Are you yeah. smoking before school? My dad one time we would film like home videos, and we did like MTV Cribs, uh, like, to go around the like, kids on our like neighborhoods houses, and we would film them. But my dad had never been to like one of the kids house and my dad was just looking at the home video camera and like <gasps> in our my friend her mom would smoke inside the house Ooh. while we play around i never questioned it my dad was like you're not going over there <laughs> hanging around in a smoke-filled room because the mom was just like smoking their house look like shit. was it your dad's camcorder yeah it was my so dad's like camcorder <laughs> and he's just like what so does it smell funny. like smoke what the hell are you doing over there that's like really not okay though. did you make home videos a lot when you were a kid but be- be- before the internet <sighs> Yeah. You remember those flip camera things? They they kind of looked like thumb drives, but a little bit bigger. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Just one button. Maybe yeah. two. It was like the big red button and then the menu and button. And it was like one frame per second. It was like so choppy. <laughs> yeah, you right. couldn't really see what you were doing because yeah. the like, screen was so small. But my mom bought me one of those and I was like... In third or fourth grade, and I had a hoot and a half. <laughs> like, I'm not kidding. Also, I, I love that that's your name. It's right, like oh, my favorite fucking thing ever. That was like the first idea that we had, and we yeah. were just like, let's roll with it. Yeah, we would make like horror movies and stuff on like uh, the, the Super 8 handy cams, like the small cassette See, ones. See, that's vintage and cool, because yeah. you're like a little bit old. How old are you guys? Um, I'm 29. You're what, 24? I'm 24, but my sister is 27, so she's like in that realm, and I think that I... My generation just was the brink of like the vintage, yeah. VHS, right. they got cameras. a little digital. In Did your you have area. like a first CD or oh were my CDs? God. Were, were you past CDs? Was it like, uh, already... did you ever own a cassette? I remember my first cassette. Okay, I'm not that old. <laughs> well, it was because <laughs> my parents, <laughs> my parents' cars didn't have CD players, and it was like 1998 Backstreet Boys. They come didn't out. have CD players, or they, they didn't did? have CD players in their car. So my parents bought the cassette because they're like, if we want to listen to this in the car, it's got to be a cassette. That is so cool and vintage, yeah. honestly. Like, 
I had um, like the little DVD players and the CD player, like the portable ones. Okay, but so you had CDs. Yeah. Okay, you weren't just straight Napster and Spotify. Oh God, okay. no. Um, my older sister would always just give me the hand-me-downs of her Britney Spears and uh-huh. NSYNC. I was an NSYNC girl, not a Backstreet girl. I, I, same. I started off with Backstreet, then went to NSYNC. Okay, because good. a little bit more poppy. Poppy and, like, Justin Timberlake. What? Yeah, True. he's the only one who still made it. So the, you guys had good taste then because he's you picked the right – you picked the winners. Joey Fatone is on to something, Okay. Joey Fatone, he's like a chef, I think. Oh yeah, he is. Yeah, really? <laughs> it, you I know who's know. the wealthiest? I would you know who the wealthiest? Well, oh, wait, no, it's Backstreet Boys. You know who the wealthiest Backstreet Boy is? I'm assuming it's Aaron Carter's brother, Nick. Yeah, is it's actually wealthiest? not. It's AJ. Who the, who the AJ fuck is, is the bad boy with all he, the tattoos? It, it, yes. But he ended up succeeding because he started producing like a lot of really, really big songs. So he's been like killing it on his own on the side. Because I always thought like, oh, the most popular ones were the wealthiest. Right. This is what I do in my spare time. No, like, the wealthiest Look Backstreet Boy is. Yeah. <laughs> I do the same. I'm embarrassed about how much I Google net worths. Like, <laughs> I just finished watching. Um, this like two hour long Britney documentary, but not about like all the fucked up shit that happened to her. It was just about her being an icon and like all the iconic great moments. Yes. Just last night I was watching it. That's <laughs> what I love to do in my spare time. And you're a big one, but you're a big One Direction uh, fan. <sighs> Hardcore. It used to be. Used to be why? Because they're no longer yeah. together. So you have to say past tense. Yeah. Yeah. Did you go to one of the Harry Styles shows that was in L.A.? <laughs> oh, sorry. Sore subject. Um, only because I just don't remember it, and it's really heartbreaking for me because I because you did out. go. Oh, you <laughs> went. Oh, I was there, but, but I you wasn't were, there. You weren't there. Got it. How close did you get? I was in the pit with all my friends. I blacked out in the parking lot. Oh, so you almost made it. <laughs> almost made it, dude. Wait, we're talking about drinking blocking out. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was just like pure ecstasy in the presence <laughs> of Harry that it just blocked out. Uh-uh. Oh, damn. I'm sorry that oh, happened for sucks. you. Oh, it sucks. It's like traumatizing. <laughs> Do you have videos? Uh, No videos on my camera roll. I woke up the next morning and... I go on my Instagram and someone tagged me in a video and I was like, what the fuck? Because I was so humiliated because I was like, I can't tell you one thing about that show. Mm -hmm. And I had tickets for this show for two years before COVID. Like he released the tickets right before COVID. I got that shit. I was so excited and I was waiting for this night, anticipating it. And I think that I just got really nervous before the show. So I took, I was like ripping shots Uh before Because also, like, my entire demographic on the internet, they're Harry fans. Yeah. They're like, One Direction fans. So I kind of was nervous about that. And so I was just, like, ripping shots before. Don't remember anything. And then I woke up the next morning. Someone tagged me in a video of me apparently twerking for Lizzo because Lizzo was there and BTS was there. And they were just chilling, like, on the balcony Whoa. Yeah. And they spotted you and you were like trying to get their attention? Yeah. And I, there was like a circle around me, like a crowd. And I was dancing in the middle for Lizzo because Lizzo put me on her story. <gasps> no way. Yes. Did she tag Sarah Baska? She didn't even know you. She was just like, I like this girl's energy. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Damn. And BTS was right next to them. It was, and I was like, are you joking? Like, I don't even remember that. Wow. <laughs> it sucks. But the internet does. The it, internet that's, does. It's written in ink, so you, ha- you were there. there. You were there. I you guess. were there, but and you hardly remember it. That kind of reminds me, I, one of the first times like, I really like, smoked weed in high school, we went and saw The Dark Knight. You can't do that. And I was so high. And then, like, the next morning, my mom was like, so what was it about? And I was like, <laughs> I don't even remember the damn movie at all. At all. I couldn't. And then I was just like, oh, the Joker. He just comes back. That's you were it. just mesmerized by like the cinematography. Yeah. And, like... I just I just I didn't realize that I should tell my parents about the movie. Right. But like I was just so stoned like, that subtly, I didn't remember. Subtly pulling it up on IMDb. Yeah. yeah. In the Dark Knight, Christopher Nolan directed a yeah. like start right. reading the IMDb to your mom. Oh the, my god, that's tragic. Have you met any of the One Direction members? Like, have you had any face to face time? 
I should have by now. I feel like you deserve it. I deserve it so bad. Not even Niall. No offense to Niall. I've, like, hu- I've hung out with Niall. That's so annoying Also, to me. what do you mean not even Niall? Niall's one of the top ones. Slow Hands, great song. That's I think he's kind of number three. Who's number two? Oh, Zane, Zane. is number two. It's <laughs> Harry Zane. Oh, well, <laughs> this is where it gets <laughs> dicey. If we're going to get technical, Zane just isn't around. He doesn't tour. He's right. not putting out music. He's just kind of like living his best life. He's doing whatever. Right. Um, I guess technically it would be Niall, but he was just my least fave. He was just a brother to me, you know? Right. Actually, I take that back. Liam was my least favorite. You I know- didn't even meet Liam yet. What the fuck? <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, uh, what? Um, but yeah, I haven't met any of them yet, unfortunately. If I, I don't want to meet Harry, though. Like, I don't. Someone, I think Carly like said that too, or like they. It would just be too much. Yeah, too much. They don't want to. Can't do it. I He's made not eye real. contact with him one time at a restaurant, but that was it. Where and why? Soho, and how? Soho, and it was actually on Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> Mike, Thank Jewish you. holiday. Um, <laughs> uh, got to the top floor, and it was like we were the first people there, and then it was just only Harry, and he was with this other guy, and he looked at us, and I looked right at him, and that was it. But we did, locked eyes. I was did like, you? pass away <laughs> i think i just did that Salute white guy like smirk like you know oh my god not the like, smirk. Hey. that we're in the same elevator smile <laughs> yeah that's mm-hmm. it yeah Hello? wow i just want that you know just, i just want that just not. a moment a moment god you don't realize how blessed you are it doesn't happen i know happen. i i couldn't i was start i started to shake um <laughs> speaking of other things listed on your famous birthdays besides being a harry styles fan oh, god you used to work at a trampoline park? I didn't. Were there a lot of ups and downs at that job? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Good one, Mike. No, that's a great question. <laughs> um, that was my first job when I was 16. And I only got it, not to like bring the mood down, but I got it because... Uh, my one of my really good friends passed away and at the park no at the park. <laughs> sorry <laughs> so there was like an opening oh my god sorry no 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 but really bring this to, bring it so around funny. though how did like someone pass away in this opening yeah. no 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 it was just one of my close friends passed away in high school and i was in a really bad place just going through it and um on christmas we were going to the movie theater and we passed by this new trampoline park. I live in a really small town, or I used to. It's like Southern Oregon, small ass town, maybe like fifteen thousand people. Whoa! And so the fact that there was a trampoline park opening up was insane. So we passed by it, and then my mom's like, "Hey, maybe you should, you know, apply and just try to get your mind off of this." And I was like, "Eh, okay, whatever." And I applied for it, got it the next day. No experience, didn't know what I was doing, and I just show up, and even like. The owners didn't know what they were doing either. They've never owned a business. Yeah. <laughs> we just bought this off Amazon. Yeah. And now we just set this up. Let's see what happens. The waivers were not okay. So like, wait, they your, were not okay. Your friend who passed away always liked the trampoline park, and then um, therefore you fe- Oh, you were just in a sad place. Way. Oh, okay. And then... <laughs> And yeah, it was it was like just a like a, a, way, a reason to get over. Did you say that that in the job interview? Where they're like, "So why do you want to work here?" You're like, "Listen, I'm at some <laughs> like just a sob story yeah. about no, no, no." Honestly, I just think that they didn't have enough people applying, okay. and I could just do like the check in moment because I wasn't old enough to actually be a monitor because oh. you have to be 18 to like actually monitor people on the trampolines. Um, did you still get some free jumps though? Oh yeah, yeah. You but got I free never jumps? did. I never did it. Trampoline parks always sound like a really fun idea, and then you get there, and then you've been jumping for like five minutes. And you're you're like, just I'm exhausted. sick of this. It's hard. I'm sick of this. <laughs> you get sweaty. You're just winded, out of breath. Yeah, you're like, okay. You're like you go to a bouncy house at a birthday party, and it's like three minutes. You're just like <gasps> three minutes, and you're over it. Yeah. And you have to pay for an hour session. Yeah, like oh, what it's an am hour I gonna session? do? Yeah. Hmm. What am I gonna do for an hour? Like what? Did you at least like learn how to do like a backflip or anything? Did they have those like angular oh, like yeah. ones? Oh, where you it was can, like, like a real the avalanche. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. I'm just picturing like a field in the middle of Oregon with like just seven <laughs> trampolines. There are those, and outside. that's it. Just outside, yeah, just like outdoors in someone's backyard. I it's love like a good freezing. in-ground trampoline, like the ones that people have in their backyard, where it's, it's like safer. it's one with the ground. But yeah. I'm always worried about snakes. 
Okay, yeah. Snakes get under those like in ground trampolines like a lot. It's like really? a perfect snake pit. I could see that. Because they can like go and like bask Lay under eggs. the sun down there in like the shade kind of. No, this wasn't out in the middle of Oregon okay, in okay. the fields. It was in like this huge warehouse. It was just so fucking random, honestly. And it was cute. I met my uh, now ex-boyfriend there. At, at the trampoline park. Yeah. Because he also worked there. And he um, went to like the opposing high school. So I went to north. He went to south. And then he would like come in on his skateboard after school. And he would like put his work shirt oh, on. Skater and I was, like, boy. Love that. I, I wanted to be a skater boy so bad. I just <laughs> couldn't skate. I would just go to Hot Topic and buy. You Did know, you try to skateboard? Yeah, and it wasn't good. Yeah, you, you're you're sort of like long. For I a had skateboard. like a Walmart skateboard. You know, there were like the good skateboards that were yeah. like broken yep. in and like yep. nice fresh grip tape. No, you I had, had like a plastic like, one that uh, had like plastic wheels and everything doesn't move. No. Yeah. God, and no. you wish you could be good enough to have the cool ones that you get at Hot Topic and Spencer's, like the one with the crazy designs on them yes. and shit. And I always just wanted my hair to like curl out, like have that cool skater boy haircut, but my hair was just really straight and it. But it wasn't like emo straight. It was just like... You wanted the wave? I wanted the wave. All the guys had that perfect little... You know what I'm talking yeah, about? I know what you're talking about, but you can achieve that with a flat iron. Can you not? If you like flipped it out. But he doesn't out. have a sister. And uh, I, yeah. I realize that... And I don't have a sister either. There's a lot that you miss growing up when you only grow up with brothers. How many brothers do you have? Just one. Okay. One brother. Is he older? Younger. 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 You're an older brother. Mm-hmm. And now he just moved to LA, so I'm very excited about that. <gasps> Wait, how is that for you? Good, but it's kind of like another plant you have to water. Like, I don't think that he's out here all the time. And I'm like, oh, the weekend's having. I should invite my brother to this. (laughs) Like, you, like, forget to, like, think about including him on things. And we have to, like, coordinate dinners and stuff. And you're like, because he's my brother. We have to be doing this. But it's we're both getting used to... I don't know the pattern, but this episode of Hoot and Hap is sponsored by Fabulous, the number one self-care app to help you build better habits and achieve your goals. Fabulous makes it easy for anyone to develop and stick to healthy habits thanks to science-backed daily routines. And as a result, you will feel healthier, fulfilled, and more productive. So how does it work? There are two ways built to suit your needs. The first is self-coach. If you already know how to start building habits, you can pick among more than 100 habits and create your own. Fabulous helps you build these habits thanks to timely reminders and other features, embedding behavioral science principles, as well as science-backed content. And the second way is guided habit coaching. If you need guidance on where or how to start, Fabulous will help you use programs to reach your objective, develop your motivation, and discover wellness best practices. And we love Fabulous because it helps you build healthy habits that stick. This award-winning app helps you create long-lasting change in your daily routine. Based on behavioral science, it breaks down scientifically proven healthy habits into very small tasks that you can easily achieve every single day. I have the app right here. It's always on my home screen. It's one of the first things I check in the day. Right now, my habit is drinking a full glass of water first thing when I wake up every morning. And even that small little habit has made my life so much better. These small improvements really work and it helps you be accountable to yourself because you realize that as you do these habits, you actually feel and act better. I'm happy for you, Mike, because you're always going for that coffee. I you know. need to hydrate before you get the coffee, Mike. You got to hydrate before you vibrate. <laughs> That's right. And with the premium membership, all the content is unlocked. Unlimited number of habits in your routine, daily coaching sessions, all journeys, all exercises, and more. So start building your ideal daily routine. And the first 100 people who click the link will get 25% off their fabulous subscription. So check out the link, sign up for fabulous, start building building better habits and check out the link in the description and the first 100 people to do so will get 25% off their fabulous subscription. Be fabulous, get fabulous, stay fabulous. All right, back to the episode. Wait, and your dad was an NFL player? <laughs> yeah. For the Denver Broncos? Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, 77 he was in a Super Bowl. He didn't win. Oh. He played against the Cowboys. This is still haunt him to this day. Oh, go Cowboys. I'm from Dallas. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Sorry well, we beat you. But he, <laughs> That's okay. Oh, damn. What year was that then? 77 oh. or 78. 
I'll one always of remember that. Or I'll, every time I'll look at the year, because the Cowboys are big about every time they've won the Super Bowl, I'll oh think of your dad and say a little prayer. Yeah, please do. He's still going through that. Well, I'm, I'm interested in like what type of like father he was, this like mm. former professional football player. Was he like aggressive with you when it came to you pursuing sports? Did he have a division set out for you? Mm, that's a, I don't think anyone's really asked me that. That's a really good question. Um, so after my dad... After that Super Bowl, actually, he got in a really bad motorcycle accident that almost killed him. Um, this is before he had me. And um, he went to the hospital, and he didn't die, but he almost had to get his leg amputated. They told him, like, you're either going to die or we have to amputate your leg because it was, like, this crazy infection. And then my dad had really bad anger issues at that time. That's why he was playing football, yeah. you know? <laughs> And he basically threatened the doctor, and he was like, if I wake up tomorrow without a leg, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and the doctor's like, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Because <laughs> my they, dad wasn't kidding. And they made it work? They made it work? They did this crazy surgery that they've only done three other times ever, where they took a side of my dad's, I, I think it's um, his pelvic bone at the very top, and they just replaced it on his tibia and like connected his tibia to yeah and so my dad has this giant lump on his leg but for a really long time he he couldn't play football anymore that was his only thing that he was good at at the time um he was really depressed really angry and um then he met my mom and then he was like, fuck, how do I make money now? You know, like, mm -hmm. what the fuck? Um, and so then he was really um, curious about why his thought patterns were getting so dark and why he was so depressed. And he was really curious about that. So he went back to school and he studied psychology and then he got his master's in psychology and he really dove into his anger issues and he became a therapist for domestic violence. Whoa. And he's been working at jails and just teaching classes on domestic violence and anger. And um, so growing up, my dad like really wanted me and my sister to do sports. So we were in gymnastics when we were little. I played soccer my entire life, volleyball my Dirt entire biking. life. No, I wish. <laughs> no. I wish, right. bitch. Oh, my God. Um, but it was just like all those classic sports, you know? Right. And my dad was cute. Like he wasn't too like, this is what you need to do. Like you need to be an athlete because I couldn't do it. He was just vibing. He was supporting us. And one year my sister's coach just quit her soccer coach. And she was like in fourth grade and he just walked out, like just didn't show up anymore. And all the parents, they were like, what are we going to do? We already paid for the season. <laughs> and my dad's like, I'll learn how to play soccer. I'll be the coach. Mr. Basca. <laughs> Mr. Stepping ba up. Mr. Basca just randomly. Coach Basca. <laughs> After his therapy sessions during the day and like teaching about domestic violence, he would show up and coach my sister. But my dad's a chiller now. Like he, he is just one of the best people I know. Damn. He's like my role model and we his story is nuts. We'll have, we'll have him on next. This sounds way more interesting. I know. <laughs> Literally. It, it really is. Like every time people meet my dad, they just sit with him for hours. My dad's a storyteller. That's where I get my shit from. Like my entire personality pretty much. And he just will talk to anyone for hours about I, that. I keep saying we need to have like a parents weekend where everyone just like brings out their parents and we can all have like a cookout. Like uh, fraternities and sororities, they do that where it's parents weekend. And you just <laughs> Why have all the parents we make come to meet ones? every yeah because yeah. like when you move out from your hometown it's like when you stay in your hometown all the parents know each other but then when you leave and move to new york or texas or wherever the parents never meet you never no. meet your, your parents friends so. mike loves my dad i feel like you and my dad talk more than i talk to him really? i've never met him i've never yeah. met his dad but we we're, we're friends on instagram and like he responds to my stories we talk about like records and like music and history and He's yeah, I, I would love to meet him. But that's like, how my mom is too. Like my mom's on Twitter and Instagram. She's like talking to all my friends, and I'm like, I always tell my friends like, are you okay with Barb just like yeah. sliding in your DMs every day? They're like, we love it. I'm like, okay. There was a point where I feel like it, like we probably 
used to think that that was really cringy, like when your mom first got on Facebook and you're just like, oh, stop commenting on all my college photos. Yep. But then now it's like now that we're a little bit more mature, it's like, yeah, yeah, fuck it. Be friends with my friends. Uh, but I love, a good, I love a good cringy online mom, though. Like Bye. I have some friends whose parents are like or whose moms are like teenagers on Facebook, like like 12 statuses a day kind of stuff, <laughs> like fill out every type of survey like oh that they God. can and just or passive aggressive stuff. Oh like my, it's I'm like, I eat it. Oh. I love it. Though I would get mad at my mom if she did it. But like the other ones, I'm like, let's <laughs> keep seeing it. The hometown Facebook drama. Oh. I live. I prefer Facebook sometimes over Instagram because like Instagram in the world that we're in, it's just work and everyone's always doing something. Facebook is just like, oh, it's, it's a slot cringy. machine. You're like, who's <laughs> pregnant? Who's <laughs> married? I just have to, oh, it's just a binge. I go on there. Dude. I'm like, where is that person these days? How are they? I think about, I fixate on that a lot. Do you lot. spend a lot of time on Facebook doing this? I do. That's, I don't post anything on Facebook. Right. Yeah. I just go on there to see the tea. I and? just want to know what the hell the tea is. Mm-hmm. And you find a lot of good stuff there? Oh, Oh my God. Like I'm still friends with all of my friends as parents and just the debates they get yes. into and they go, they're nasty. Oh, they get deep. They're they get nasty. vicious. And it's insane. Cause I'm always curious to see how the argument resolves. Yeah. It never does. I, and I love like laughing at like, like <laughs> po- political, like, like political ones that I completely disagree with, or it's some like vaccine conspiracy instead of like, Getting into it, I'll just like laugh at it. You you interact? Yeah, I laugh at it just to get in their heads, being like, I saw this and I'm just laughing at you because this is completely so fake. And I debunk some people. If it's straight up a fake news source, I snopes that shit and I go, I say nothing in the comment, I just send the link and be like, see ya. That's how my sister is. I don't do that. I just like lurking. Yeah. But like the fact that you react get that's involved, so passive yeah. aggressive so shady and i love and that. now that I, I now i'm like verified on facebook so like it i looks have legit. i have this like just check i'm like talking to all these moms i feel like i have this other sense of like i don't know yeah. authority i'm, I'm totally yes, just flattering no, myself but i'm so true just like haha i've seen like screenshots on reddit of like facebook drama but like where someone will post something about like the vaccine or whatever abortion or something and it and it will like the comments will become like well maybe that's why your husband divorced you jan <gasps> and it's like oh, yeah oh my like do, do they really talk like that or is, are these like one-off instances yes <laughs> and it's nuts especially like in small towns where everyone knows each other already like they really oh, get in each other's yeah. business my cousin is getting in a fight with his <laughs> whole entire small town because he's like mad about the volunteer fire department or is mad about this local mayor doing something and the town will go after him and my cousin's like well the whole town of bridgeport hates us <laughs> And, I, and I'm like, and there's all these people just going at it. I eat that stuff up. I can't. It's just so funny because we're so distanced from it. We're like just looking in on the yeah. drama, but not associated with it whatsoever anymore. Right. And we're not like drama influencers. And no. like, but people who just wake up, get online and just go at it. Like I envy, I wish I had the balls to do that. Even just people that comment shit on my videos or on my pictures just nasty shit i'm like who has the energy these <sighs> days especially you know and it always if you just if that person's nasty and then you look at all the other stuff it's just been nasty 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 all the way like who like are we that energized like <laughs> like aren't we all tired it must be <laughs> a why rush. are we doing it has this? to be it must feel good though if they keep doing it just go to a boxing class yeah right Get your anger. Go to a trampoline park. Jump, the, <laughs> jump out all of your anger. Come on over. If it didn't close down, literally, it, it closed down right when I left. I'm like, oh, so you I were mean, holding that whole business up? I really was. Mm-hmm. And I had to deal with so many angry dads every weekend because you had to buy two dollar socks <laughs> to use oh. at the trampoline park because they had the grippies on the bottom, kind of like hospital socks, so uh, that you don't slip on the trampoline. And they made you buy that. Two bucks though, and then you can just reuse them every time. But the dads would get so pissed about they're it. They're already wearing socks. Yeah. And they're screaming at you like a 16 or 17 year old kid. It's horrible. By a grown adult, father of a child, because there was an extra two dollar surcharge. Yep. For a and, pair of socks. Oh my god. Saturdays were a nightmare because we had birthday parties. Oh yeah. Ugh. I worked at Chuck E. Cheese, as I know. <laughs> did you yes, really? I did. <laughs> no I worked way. those birthday parties, man. <laughs> Do you- 
<laughs> ran that shit. Oh, geez, that's iconic. Oh, I love Wait, it. what? Yeah. Were you a server? Or did you I was, like... uh, uh, well, uh, the check-in stuff similar to what you did. I got to stamp kids' hands. I worked the prize stand tokens, and I was Chucky. So what's the tea with... Um... The people that would put on the shows um, in the costumes. Was there so any drama? So everybody – well, so no – it would alternate. You didn't know who was going to be Chucky until the manager came up to you and said, and would say, go wake up Chucky. And that meant that you're <laughs> Chucky and you have to go into the suit. And I loved it when he was Chucky because it's, like, easy. You're, like you, – you get, like, 15 minutes to prep and get in the costume and chill and have, like, a little Coke. Yeah, like Coca-Cola. 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 <laughs> Just doing bumps in the back of Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> I mean, that would not surprise me. And then you go out, and there's already a track that you have kind of memorized where it's like, hey, kids. <laughs> you kind we of feel say like happy. the man. You say birthday. Happy you, and you birth- want to be the Chucky? Yes. I liked it because like time would go by faster I at thought your that, job. Isn't, didn't, you, didn't you say one time like the helmet is like so smelly and gross? Yes, it that does you don't smell. Wear and there's it? like fans inside that kind of cool you off. But it is gross, but it made the job and the shift go by faster. You basically had a whole hour where you like... You, and your perform it's a show. Yeah, you don't have to really talk to anyone. You just like wiggle oh, around. You were Beyonce yeah, for those I was. kids. Uh-huh. <laughs> were they like crying and shit? Like, oh, happy yeah, as yeah. Hell? I remember like the Avatar movie came out and like one of the kids was like trying to do airbending and I airbended back at him and he was like, What? <laughs> You're just doing a Chucky dance off. Avatar. <laughs> That's really dope. Oh yeah, I lived for that. How many times did you get to do that? Multiple times. I mean, over fifty or like a hundred times. I worked there for like a year. Did and many many shifts. So were your coworkers? Was that the main goal? Like maybe I'll be Chucky today. Well, I th- I wanted to be the best one, but there was this kid Gabe, and he was like a <gasps> dancer, and he was really cool. So when he would go out as Chucky, he would just get like the party <laughs> bumping. <laughs> And I was like, well, I can't do that. He's like moonwalking and yes. shit, like break dancing. <sighs> Didn't they replace him with animatronics at some point, well, too? There, there's now a CGI Chucky. Like, once Pixar, in all of those movies, the, the cartoon face of Chucky was not that, like, popular, know, identifiable to kids. So right. they CGI'd him out. But uh, he's still in the costume, but he looks different. He's leaner in the face. He was terrifying in the 90s. Oh, yes. The 90s is the worst version he just looks of like Chucky. A, a huge, huge, oversized rat. Like an actual rodent. I don't get yeah. why they choose a rodent for a food establishment. Like, for that <laughs> right? to be the mascot. That's the one thing you don't want in the kitchen. And I've they... never thought about that before. Yeah. Cause... And now, though, they've changed it. Because it used to be Chuck E. Cheeses. Like, possessive. Now it's just the place is called Chuck E. Cheese. Wait, it was Chuck E. Cheese's? Chuck E. Cheese's. It was like, you know, it was like an Italian restaurant. Like, a we're Chuck eating e. at Cheese's. Giorgio's tonight. Like, Chuck E. Cheese's. Okay. And his name is Chuck. Middle initial E. e. Cheese. What stands for entertainment. Name? Charles Entertainment Cheese. Charles Entertainment Cheese. Yes, that's his, that's his government C-E-C name. C Entertainment. Well, yeah, yeah, that's like the name of the company. Yeah, Charles Entertainment Cheese. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, after you worked there... Was it kind of a flex to put on your resume? Oh, I wrote my college essay about working there. <laughs> your college really? entrance essay? Yeah, they said, who, who's a person who like uh, left a big impression on you or changed the way you looked at things? And I said, being Chuck E. Cheese, taking on his role, let me see the how much we need to nourish children's creativity and stuff. <gasps> oh, that's, that's actually pretty... That's, that's pretty good. That's good. I think so. It was that a good is essay. so amazing. That's really a beautiful perspective to have on that. Thank you, Sarah. How old were you? 16. I love 16? that. Yeah. Well, that's wait, a yeah. way cooler job than a fucking trampoline park. Well, folks, holiday season is here. And you know, a lot of us are thinking, yeah, it's easy to dress up in a tacky, ugly Christmas sweater like what I'm wearing. But what about the moments where you don't need to be dressed in all ugly and tacky for the holiday season? How do I maximize my time savoring the holiday season? Season and minimize my time shopping for gifts. Because let's face it, I don't want to spend all my time shopping. We want to enjoy the time. It sounds like that's what you spend all your time thinking. Enjoying the holiday season versus gift buying, Mike? Yeah, and I'm enjoying the season by being with people, not just shopping and, and trying to find the best f- clothes and the best things. I, I, I like to get, I like to be optimized. It sounds like you need some comfort in your lifestyle, Mike. I do. I'm a little wound up. I'm a little tight. I'm tight. <laughs> 
Fear not, all of you weary holiday wanderers. Mac Weldon has all the answers. Whether it's an office party, a holiday party with you and your friends, or just a party with you on the couch and a game on the TV, Mac Weldon has all the essentials to keep you stylish and comfortable this season. And their innovative daily wear system has taken the hard work when it comes to outfit planning. With pieces designed to work with any occasion, saving you time and sparing you any extra holiday stress. We're talking top-notch tops, best-selling bottoms, and accessories that will please even the scroogiest guys on your list. With Mack Weldon, your holiday heavy lifting will be complete within minutes. I've been rocking Mack Weldon all holiday season, especially when I was traveling on the airport. Mack Weldon is my go-to travel wear. You I'm, know what I'm talking about? I'm wearing my pants right now. Mack Weldon, baby. Oh, they're the best. They're best. The most comfortable. Mack Weldon's ace sweatshirt and sweatpants and warm knit collection are perfect for your holiday routine and gifts. Sometimes I'm known as something of a connoisseur of comfort. I don't like to be wearing stuffy suits. I don't like to wear rough jeans. Very much about comfort and style at the same time. That's right. Your screen name when you were growing up was Comfort Connoisseur. <laughs> That's going to be my rap name when I come out, when I, when I put my first album out, <laughs> The Connoisseur of Comfort. But you know what? I was initially skeptical of Mack Weldon, but boy, was I proven wrong. Pairing super soft, high-performance fabric with unmatched style, these are the pieces that I've become comfortable with wearing at home or running errands around town. This former sweatpants skeptic is here to tell you, don't sweat it, just trust Mack Weldon. Matt, I'm not going to lie. I'm not a fan of the cold. It's one of the reasons I moved from New York to California for that warm sunshine. But even in California, it gets a little cold. Yeah, and I hate walking around like a frozen popsicle all the time. But with Mack Weldon's warm knit collection, which features shirts, vests, pajamas, and more, using innovative technology that uses your own body heat to keep you at the perfect temperature, these Mack Weldon products have me saying something I never thought I would. I'm ready for the cold. And they even have a gift set. What a concept. It's one gift that holds many gifts inside. And nobody is doing better gift sets this holiday season than Mack Weldon. With limited edition color drop and a bevy of new releases, their holiday gift sets are the perfect present for any guy on your list. This holiday season, every guy deserves to wear unforgettable clothes that he loves for the moments with the loved ones that he'll never forget. That's why Mack Weldon is always on my list when it comes to giving or getting. For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com slash Hoot and use promo code Hoot, H-O-O-T. Once again, that is 20% off your order at MacWeldon.com slash Hoot and enter the promo code Hoot. Mack Weldon, M-A-C-K-W-E-L-D-O-N dot com slash Hoot, H-O-O-T. Use promo code Hoot and get it right this holiday season. And now back to the episode. You don't feel like you have to live out seeking attention like on a stage because you already had that. Yeah, it was kind of like my first like experience with fame, big time. You know? Complex, Just like oh, being a yeah. celebrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but like an anonymous celebrity because like you can take the mask off and then you can go and you know go into the public and not be. And also, no one can see your face when you're in it. So when you would take pictures, sometimes I would just be like, ah, <laughs> like just like, yeah. uh, like. Doing the craziest shit, like, behind it. Or just being, like, just completely deadpan. That's yeah. sick. That's, like, some Daft Punk vibes. Right. That's what I want to do. Like, I'm, I want to, at some point, become a DJ and then just wear a mask. No one knows it's me. Right. I always wonder, if does Marshmallow ever book shows? And he's like, I don't really want to go. Just get somebody and put, put on the damn helmet and perform for me. And then you get to make money off that. I'm sure that there are many people. I mean, not many, but I think Marshmallow. Mellow probably I don't know that he does but there was a rapper called MF Doom who passed away recently yes. and he wore a mask but his whole thing was that he's like the villain of rap so he would put on shows and send someone else to do the show for but him. But they have to rap. Yeah. Like but, and people would get like pissed and they're like, what the fuck? We paid to see MF Doom. And they're just like, well, he's the villain of rap. So suck it oh, up. Shit. And he would, he would purposely like piss people off and send someone else to play his shows. Would they lip sync? Or no, would I, think, he... I think they would. he would, someone else would just do the rap. Just use their own voice. Yeah. It's obviously not him. Yeah, no, I think so. It's probably easier I'd to pull pissed. off. I'd be pissed too. Fuck. I, but like, I, I feel like if you are that successful, you probably want to be doing what you're doing. Like you don't get to the top by not being passionate about what you want to do. Like I'm right. sure Dead Mouse, Marshmallow, like Dead Mouse plays shows now without the he without the mouse head. Oh, oh like right. he just goes on normal now. He's just he's just 
Have you ever met like the real marshmallow? Do you know what he looks like behind him? No One idea. of our friends dated him. The dude is handsome as is hell. He? Is he? Incredibly attractive. And I, I it, it was just like, you're marshmallow. Why do you hide behind that <laughs> mask? You would expect marshmallow to kind of not be attractive. No. Right. He's devilishly handsome. Like, what is the root here? I want to like sit down with him and be like, why do you feel like you need to hide? I wanted to ask him, but he was just showing, he was showing me a plunger that he was wanting to buy, like a Gucci plunger or something Stop. that was like worth thousands of dollars. And I'm like, okay, dude. That's a thing? <laughs> and then I saw him go around to other people at the party, still talking about this fucking plunger he wanted to buy. Nice guy, though. Uh, <laughs> you know, was there like... On the podcast, but man, you really wanted to buy that plunger. Was oh, it like, were, were there diamonds. like diamonds and yes. shit? Okay. Yes, it was thousands Thousands of dollars. Just gold. And I'm like, I'll get it. You're rich. And you... That's like when Kanye bought the Louis Vuitton trash bags. Like, there's... What? You ever saw that picture? I just... One, I can't believe Louis Vuitton would make trash right? bags. I, I don't... I actually don't know if this is real. I, I think it might have been like a Reddit thing, but apparently someone like took a photo of outside of Kanye's house like 10 years ago, and it was like a bunch of garbage bags, and the garbage bags were printed with Louis Vuitton. And so someone was like, Kanye West literally buys Louis Vuitton garbage bags. Like, that's, that's the next level of wealth is you're spending... Thousands of dollars on actual garbage. That's just, you have way too much money. If you did You're have all so of the bored. money in the world, Sarah Baska, if you did, what would be like your one like weird eccentric thing you would spend money on? Like for me, just a brand new pair of socks every day. Every $2 day? Pair of socks. No, just, uh, yeah, new, just having a new pair of socks every day. So you don't have to do laundry? I, well, it's just, I like just knowing that a sock is like, the first time you put on a sock, it feels like amazing. Your oh, first yeah. time wearing it, but just having that every day. I get that. Some socks I feel like I've been holding on to for like since college. Same. Because you can't tell like how long you've had it. Matt, I hate to burst your bubble. I, I didn't know this, that this was your like rich, rich guy dream about buying a new pair of socks every day. <laughs> I think it was Tom Brady, but there is a football player who also had the same dream about I want to be rich enough that I can all every single day put on a new pair of socks. And he did it. And what he found out was it's actually a terrible thing because when you buy a new pair of socks, there's like chemicals from the factory in them. And he put a new pair of socks on every day for like six months. And he got like some crazy infection on his feet because he was only putting on a new pair of socks and that chemical rubbed off over time. What? And he was like this like dream that I had about wanting to wear new socks every day actually was a medical disaster and it's like whole <laughs> <laughs> sorry man i'm sorry to be a buzzkill take it back but but no but maybe this is an opportunity way for you to, to bring down the vibe bro man <laughs> you just killed his dream suck dream i'm sorry i'm so, I, I think it's a fair dream too i'd love to put on a new pair of you know new pair of socks every day too but listen that not maybe maybe the, the happiness is from within you know it's not yeah. it's not from the socks are they solid white or different colors patterns good question yeah you know, well, yeah yeah you know yes different patterns <laughs> different all of that totally. for sure so now that your dreams crushed do thank you, you very do much, you have a do you have a different one because mm, you can't do that anymore do you have a plan B I guess just a lot of homes a lot of problems <laughs> Matt's, <laughs> just Matt's conquer jaws, land your jaw's like clunching out of anger right now know, no I'm he's like... so mad he's like fuck I didn't think of a plan B yeah do you have a crazy rich no, person that's thing that's a really 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 good question um I think one of the things that I would do is I would hire artists to come into my home every week I want a different artist every week and I just want to watch them paint me a picture like a beautiful fucking beautiful picture maybe different portraits of myself yeah in different locations caricatures like <laughs> like me on a horse one day oh, but I, yes. I need to be sitting there in front of him so we can like really get it like get my face i want to be exact i just want pictures of me in exotic locations just random shit i think that'd be really funny and you want to watch the artist do this yes you want to like see the process yeah and then maybe if I watch him enough, I can sit down with him and like do it with him. We can do a little contest. I think you don't even need to be rich to do this. I think you <laughs> could just do this for a YouTube video. It sounds pretty good. Just like one portrait every day for like a whole week or a whole month. 
but like famous at like I want the most famous like elegant like those artists where people pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for just, I just want that uh, yeah, every there's week. A, yeah there's a lost like for, uh, art form of like the portrait painting now they have like those ones where you just send in a picture and they just like and put they make your, it look like it's photoshopped yeah. to be a portrait yeah but yeah. really just getting someone to come and like no take it but that's actually like the royalty used to have to do that like the only only people that could have a picture of them were like kings and queens because they're the only ones who could hire an artist so that's a very yeah top tier mentality yeah like i don't want any pictures of me after i'm rich i want people to paint me you know that's right like if i have that much money just fucking paint me and make it crazy like don't take pictures anymore you know who painted that you i did did you Ooh, watercolor, watercolor. this is my first it. watercolor just a little house just a little house on is the it fall. just like a rando house yeah i just went on like the subreddit house porn where just people post like cute pictures of houses and i go i'm gonna paint that now i like to do watercolors of people that i know's houses okay yeah. kind of creepy oh, it's a good <laughs> gift it's a good gift <laughs> before really you precious. murder them <laughs> it's like, like what a serial killer would do like i'm gonna paint their house oh, yeah. in watercolor before i I get well, like my my girlfriend's grandpa passed away, and then I made oh. a, a like they had this amazing like childhood home where her mom like grew up in, and I made a watercolor of the house and like gave it to her because they had to sell the house and say goodbye to it. And just, nah, oh, that's really precious. Thanks, thanks Sarah. Do you know my name was gonna be uh, Sarah if I was a girl? Really? Yeah, I was gonna be a Sarah. Yes, I could feel that. You, I could feel can't... that. <sighs> you know, my what, what, name. Yeah, what was your name gonna be? If You're you were... not gonna believe me. Can I guess? You can, but you will never get it. Is it like a typical 90s white guy name? Nope. So it's more unique than Sarah. I'm not saying your name isn't unique, but... My name is the most basic white bitch name you could ever think yeah, of. It's... Are you saying if you if you were going to be a boy, what well, your parents would have named you? No. So before they named me Sarah, my mom, my mom was... Oh, my God. My mom was like the typical hippie ass bitch. <laughs> and she was just had her head in the clouds. She wanted to be creative with her second born. Cause she's, my sister's name's Rachel. So my mom's like, let's switch it up. Give yeah. it some flavor. Just take a guess. Think of like a 70s hippie. Let me just say it's a verb. It's a verb. <laughs> Strum. <laughs> Uh, I wish that'd be sick. Rocky? No. Or, that was I, my dog. Cradle? Uh, no. Burp? Think of like playing with babies. What you giggle? <laughs> giggle. Tickle? Basca. Tickle or giggle? Tickle giggle Basca? Basca? Are you Giggle Basca? I wish. No. Think of like, so when you see Swaddle. a baby, like a baby that you don't goo, know. Goo. <laughs> Wave? <laughs> Wave? No. Pinch, pinch the no. cheeks. Like you're trying to make them giggle. What do you usually? Uh, peekaboo, peaky. Pe it was peekaboo. Your name was going to be peekaboo. Yeah, not even just peekaboo. It was going to be peekaboo rainbow. Not oh, kidding. Boy. That is the most Oregon shit I've ever heard in my yeah. life. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> peekaboo rainbow basket. Yeah, in my baby shower. Peekaboo rainbow on all of the shit, oh, like on committed. the banner, on the cake. Like my name was going to be Peekaboo Rainbow Basca. And then your dad probably stepped in, was like, "Hey, honey, listen." Poor like, Rachel, <laughs> though, if that happened, would have been like, "Yeah, this is Rachel in Peekaboo, Peekaboo rainbow. rainbow." No, my dad was just. My dad didn't give a fuck. My dad was just like, "Barb, you do whatever. I don't care." But my grandma Millie. Actually, oh. had like literally threw a conniption one day. Oh, grandma stepped in. Grandma Millie stepped in and she sat my mom down and she's like, if I have a granddaughter named Peekaboo Rainbow, I will leave. Like, I can't do it. Your child is going to be bullied. Yes. Um, Peaky this... is kind of cute. Pe Did it have hyphens in it? Like, Peekaboo is like, yeah, three words. Peekaboo. It was or... just a, a one... One shot peekaboo. First Did you make name. like all your screen names and like usernames online peekaboo rainbow? It's like that's kind of yeah. It does sound like an AOL screen name. Peekaboo rainbow <laughs> one one six. Uh -huh. like. Right? No, I shoved that shit so down, <laughs> so much so down into my memory. I'm like, I don't even want to think about the fact that my name was gonna be peekaboo rainbow. But now that I have like an internet presence, it could be a rap name or your, your music yeah. career kind of sick peekaboo rainbow is a sick artist name 
or just peekaboo yeah but then, so, <laughs> like rainbow it's interesting then that you started your online career as kind of sarah because you kind of were not sarah you kind of <laughs> right. you kind of could have been someone else <laughs> kind of been sarah kind of peekaboo rainbow so it's all full circle we're doing a lot of holiday shopping right now that's right and one thing that i've noticed is when you search for something you always then get ads for that thing that you search for and the internet is kind of tracking you what you search so constantly you're... which sometimes i like and sometimes i hate because sometimes i've bought the product and then i'm continually haunted by the ads like i've already bought the mattress and i don't need to be told to buy the mattress again <laughs> and sometimes in my case I don't want someone like maybe Whitney or you, if I'm Googling something, to see what I'm going to buy you as a gift for the holidays. So I don't want you to see my search history. Oh, but... Mike, I have never thought about that. Well, let me tell you something. Incognito mode does not hide your activity. It hides it maybe for your browser, but the internet, your ISP, the trackers, they're still following you all over the place. Oh, my goodness. It doesn't matter what mode you use or how many times you clear your browser history. Your internet service provider can still see every single website you visited. Oh boy, I'm spooked, Mike. That's why even when I'm home, I never go online without using ExpressVPN. It doesn't matter who your internet service provider is, ISPs can legally in the US sell your data to ad companies. ExpressVPN is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers. So your ISP, your internet service provider, can't see the sites you visit. Hmm, that's pretty interesting. So ExpressVPN keeps your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. And most of the time, you don't even realize when ExpressVPN is on. It's running in the background and it's so easy to use. All you have to do is tap one button and you're protected. And what I really love about ExpressVPN and from what I'm learning about them is that it's available on all of your devices. Phones, computers, even your smart TV. There's no excuse for you not to be using ExpressVPN. So protect your online activity today with the VPN rated number one by Business Insider. So visit my exclusive link at expressvpn.com slash hoot. And you can get an extra three months free on a one-year package. It's expressvpn.com, E-X-P-R-E-S-S, vpn.com slash hoot, H-O-O-T. Visit expressvpn.com slash hoot to learn more. Um, I saw, I think it was either a Twitter or a TikTok of a girl who was like, um, my year-long prank is that my boyfriend hates Drake, but he leaves his Amazon Alexa at home when he goes to work. So from the second he leaves in the morning till he gets home, I'm just playing Drake. <laughs> so at the end of the year, his number one artist will be Drake, and he's going to have no idea how it happened. <laughs> That's so good. That's, That's evil. And now I feel like, because like I don't know if you saw the Taylor Swift girls on TikTok that were like posting, they were the, like one girl was the number one Taylor Swift listener in the world and made a TikTok about it. They got like half a million plays. Another girl was like in the point oh 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 five percent and she played that new Phoebe Bridger song with Taylor Swift for like 500,000 minutes or something. And it's like... People are getting viral TikToks by oh, being the top artist. Oh, no, that's, that's too much. Yeah, so all the comments are like, girl, are you okay? Like, is, is everything all right? There aren't even that many minutes in the year. Like, how did you listen? Like, this one girl listened to more Taylor Swift than people in the UK listen to music. Like, it was insane. Oh, so she just had it playing or every hour. Or some people are just like, they could just listen to music 24 hours a day. But I feel like next year, people are going to like get Spotify burner accounts to like make TikToks for next year to be like, I was the number one listener to the SpongeBob SquarePants theme song. And like, just wow. to get clout. I could see that. I could see like people planning for January 1st, to, like start new ghost, like burner Spotify accounts. They should incentivize it. Like give that person like free tickets or something. You, if yeah. you are the number one listener, that's just people doing too much for yeah. TikTok clout. I, I mean, that's what kind of the whole platform. I was in high school. I would totally do something yeah, like that's that. True. Though. Like, when you have a lot of time, when you get home from school at, like two or three p.m. That's a lot of time left in the day to, you know, do some dumb stuff. I would actually probably do that for Harry in high school. Try, and, yeah, like <laughs> yeah. try and become the number one most listened to yeah. Harry Styles fan in the world. I bet you there's so many people who are gonna do that. Try and get that for next year. That's my that's little actually prediction. Pretty funny. That's actually. But can you imagine funny. being the number one listener of an artist? In, on the platform. That's so much pressure. I would need them to acknowledge me. Yes. Like, and if I they could, don't. Yeah. Then it's, what was it all for? What was it all for? <laughs> all those hours spent? Like, I, I need a personal letter and pen or something. Show up to my house. <laughs> yeah, please. please. Is Taylor Swift going to ever see that? I don't ever know. Maybe. That? Taylor Swift does interact with the fans. Does she? But I feel oh, like yeah. that would be a fan where she would be like, I don't know about Are you. Are y'all Swifties? Uh, yes. I, uh, yes. To a certain degree. Okay. I am. 
What does uh, that mean? Meaning like every I night? don't I, I'm not like following everything with her, but I do I love that she is actually writing every single one of those songs. Yes. She's so hands on with her music. And that the documentary completely like changed me and I love how much she loves Scottish fold cats, which are like my favorite cat. Yes. Um, uh, oh my god. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'm Swifty. I, yeah. I'm on, I'm on that same vibe. Like at first, I was kind of on that not hate train, but I was just like, she's just cringing. Ooh, yeah, like, I think she's easy relax. to hate. On. Can I can I say one thing about Taylor Swift? Yeah. yeah, but all respect to all people, and she has the worst posture ever. Does she? <laughs> Taylor Swift? Have you ever <laughs> known? Like, dude, her neck is like it's out to here. Like all of her album covers are like. Really? I think yes. it's a thing from people who play guitar and sing. You always have to get to the microphone so your like posture starts to get bad. She's I think it's like stu- a thing. She's stuck like that. Because she's so elegant and you're just like, can you sit up a bit? Like she her neck is here. <laughs> All respect though, other people have different postures in the world. I like understand. Get a chiropractor. Yeah. Figure that out. Hey, sit up. I want to straighten her out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't even know how to do I that. I feel like when you but... get to be that big though, like who who on her team is gonna be like, Taylor, let's <laughs> <laughs> right, let's, let's pull it back, sweetie. <laughs> My mom would do that to me. My mom would be like, sweet, shoulders back. Pull, shoulder. <laughs> wait, but wait, do you have any like beef or hate on Taylor Swift? Oh, or what? not at all. I just, I don't know what it was. It was, I think I was just a sheep following everyone else being like, she's cringy. She kind <laughs> of is. And I, Okay, actually, now but that I'm really it. thinking about it, I think it was because she dated Harry back in the uh, day. And I think that that's what... Planted the planted seed of, that seed in my head of like fuck Taylor Swift, but yeah, she does cool stuff though. Like in the since the beginning of her career, like if if the fan invites her to a wedding, she like gets a lot of wedding invitations, and she'll just show up and play at a fan's wedding, but never talk about it, never post about it. Oh, it's dope. only like it'll go viral on Twitter or like whatever. And then I read something that her managers made her do when she was first starting out. They were like, "What is your goal for next year or whatever?" She's like, "I want to sell." 500,000 albums and they were like well then you need to meet 500,000 people and so when she did her opening slots for tours she would like open up for I don't know some someone bigger than her like back in the day like I don't know Katy Perry or whatever right. she would wait after the show and meet every single fan that wanted to meet her so she'd be at the venues till like 2, 3 in the morning meeting every single person taking a photo and like putting in the effort to get the fan base that she has wow okay no that's amazing so like that's why I'm kind of like yeah she like is like kind of cringy and like tries to do these like tough girl like raps in her songs. I'm just like, what do you? But hey, it works. She embraces it. I I don't think that way anymore, Swifties. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Oh yeah, they'll come after you. No, they will. And I want to make that very clear. I yes. love Taylor Swift. I love Taylor Swift. <laughs> Everybody loves Taylor Swift in this house. You hold up a newspaper with today's date. <laughs> Literally. Sorry, my friend. Do you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> we, I love Taylor Swift. Um, it's no, like a hostage video. <laughs> I think what cringed me out was the Reputation era a little bit, um, but I just didn't really understand it. I love the Reputation. Did now. you? In the middle of the night. night my oh, dreams. I've heard. Like I'm, I'm, I'm just like I was a closeted hater. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, I would listen to it all the time, but I was just like cringy. But um. I think ever since I saw the documentary and I really got to see her as a person and really like her as just another human being that goes through every emotion that we do too. Mm -hmm. And oh, that scene where she's riding getaway car with Jack Antonoff. mm -hmm. He's like, I'm in the getaway car. Let's hit the motor. And then they like, they finish the line and they're like, yes. And then it cuts to her on stage and she's singing getaway. Oh, I get chills. I think I'm just time. also jealous of her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just I was projecting too. a lot. That you have better posture, so like you know, yeah, take, take the wins. I'll take let's, it. Let's pull it back, Taylor. <laughs> no, but ever since I saw that documentary, and then I like, I was like, oh no, she's like pretty cool. And then I listened to all of her albums, and and I would listen to them with Genius up, you know, classic. Oh, yeah. And then you would read along, and then you're like, wait, these lyrics are really, really profound and amazing. And then she would like capture the exact emotion that I would be feeling, but in this really poetic, beautiful way. And I'm like, wait, Taylor Swift? I like her. And then also my um, my friend Caitlin was a huge fan, and she was like, Sarah, just give her a chance. Just sit down and read her lyrics. And then I did that, and I was like, I get you, Caitlin. Mm-hmm. I, and I get all of you, Swifties. Yes. <laughs> I'm ser- like, she is so amazing, and I'm so proud of where she is now especially with everything that happened with um scooter braun and shit 
I don't, she's like the only person I feel like who could like re-release all of her stuff and get just amount as many listens. Like any if any other artist did that, I'd be like, good luck. That's like not, no one cares anymore. Yeah, no. <laughs> her new mu- her music video is so good. I know. I, I cried know. with uh, with Sophie Sadie Spink. Is that her name? Yeah, from Stranger Things. I was like, since when are you an adult? Mm-hmm. Since when? And are Taylor you? Swift directed it too, right? I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sarah, <laughs> what do you got to what do you got to plug? You got your YouTube channel, um, your TikTok. I have nothing to promote as of right now, but you can check me out on YouTube, Sarah Basca, Sarah with an H. Basca like basket, but Basca. I actually thought of that today when I was <laughs> Typing up your name, I was like, Basket, Basket. Have you ever thought oh. about Basket's Baskets at all? Oh, bitch. Basket's Gr- Baskets? Yeah. Basket's Baskets. Growing up, my name was Sarah Basketball Head. So I've heard it all. Basketball Head? <laughs> yeah. Now you got I me guess. like analyzing the shape of your head. Like, I'm like, is there something like behind that hair where it's just, or my... is it a Hey Arnold thing? Like <laughs> football head, basketball head? Just my weave. Um, no, <laughs> but yeah, you can check me out, Sarah Basca. TikTok, I'm not really on it, but you can still follow me there. Sarah Basca, Twitter, Sarah Basca, uh, two A's. Yeah. Well, damn, I'm glad we made this happen. I and know. you are more than welcome anytime to come over. We gotta I hang love out it more. Here. This, this is good. Was so much fun. Thanks for inviting me, seriously. Hey, Mike, and thanks for being here, too. Oh, thanks. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm All so right. glad. We'll this see was you guys fun. next time. Bye, Bye, everybody. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.